Welcome to this Zentangle Quickie. My name is Heather Hartwick Ladd and I'm a certified Zentangle teacher. And today we're going to take a look at the Tangle Fife by Zentangle. I just got done with a couple sessions today. We did some sessions on shading and Fife was in the program and I realized I don't think I've done a, a Zentangle Quickie on Fife. So here we go. All right, but this time I'm going to do so I think anyway yeah I'm gonna do my little four corners and a border which will be a little wiggly okay I haven't done that in a while all right so this one is a it's a grid pattern but it's a grid of dots so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start in the center and I'm gonna make mine kind of far apart And it, I'm just, and like I said, I'm just, it's just dots because the, um, oh, I guess I won't have too many. All right. Cause I'm doing them big enough. Oh, look at that. How neat. Okay. <laughs> so, um, there is, and then the, the, the stroke that we're doing is the C shape two ways, which makes a seed. So once you have, so whatever space you're using, and you fill it with dots, the dots will become the beginning and the end of each seed. So you really just, you just want to touch your pen and, and that's it. Because then it'll, it'll all blend in. All right, so again, so a seed is, get the pen working here. We'll see how this one works. Um, so I have, I think I've, I don't know how long I've used this pen. I should date them. Sometimes I think I should do that. Because um, it's like the nib is getting really small. All right, so. And let's see, can you see? Yes, you can. All right. Curve line going from one dot to the next dot, like so. And if you want to for comfort, you could flip your tile or your paper, do the same thing in the other direction. Although that one is looking, uh, I, I for this tangle, sometimes I like to do them a little thinner, but it will do because there's no such thing as a mistake in tangle, right? Or, you know, you don't have to do that. You can just you know, do it one way and then do it the other way, whatever works best. But what I like to do is we're going to, sorry about the little shaky thing there, you know, doing it all going one direction at one time. And then because I have my squiggly border, I am going to go off the side. So when I do that, and I'm essentially using the hollow technique, right? So we're drawing under, but we're going to draw under the border. <laughs> this the song just popped in my head. Oh, we're gonna change under the boardwalk to under the border. <laughs> Sorry, I just put that in your head too. My apologies. <laughs> oh, okay. And so there we go. And I do them a lot of times last because then I've I've kind of gotten the groove of of the of the curves for each seed and then I can kind of continue that even though it's so so I'm not making like just a teeny one it's like I'm making the full curve and I just pick up my pen when it comes to the pencil line all right next move these pens out of my way okay next same thing rinse and repeat just going in the opposite direction or uh, no not opposite uh, it would be a perpendicular direction right okay And we'll do the full ones first. And the reason I mentioned, so you can, I mean, of course, do this any size you want. And now let me get this little, well, that one didn't even meet up. Goodness, we'll add a little weight there and that'll fix it. And we'll get these little partials. And I do sometimes, you know, I like to turn the tile also so that way you can see it. Um, but also so that way it's just easier in the hand. Like so. All right. Now, we're still doing the same stroke, except that now we're going to go diagonal. And I used to have a, a really big challenge with this, and I know it was because I was feeling like, oh, well, I can't touch these other sides. How am I going to fit it in? Well, you can touch the other side. So essentially, I'm going to trace over just a little bit of that side and a little bit of, you know, the beginning and the end so that it tucks in there really, really nice. 
just like so. Oops, well, and that one looks like a straight line. Doesn't matter, no such thing as a mistake. That was just called, uh, Heather was going a little too fast. And I'll do these little partials. You know, and what if one ends up straight, just make sure the other one's curved and then you're good. <laughs> Some of the really, like, well, it's like right here. You know, so it's like, oh no, not right there. So I want to get that, I want to get the, the seed going diagonal, but sometimes on these partials it's a little bit of a challenge. But I find it, just be confident and just go. Okay. Now, while this does make a really cool pattern just like this, there is one final step. And that is, we're going to go underneath. So we're going to utilize that hollow technique. And if you don't know what that means, I, there is a video on it for, uh, from me. So there's a quickie video uh, where I explain it and we're doing that tangle. So it's a tangle, but the tangle, uh, actually we just, we just call the technique after the tangle because that's what it does. It's, it's the art of drawing underneath. So what I'm going to do is, it's the same shape, we're drawing the seed shape. But what I do is... Um, when I come to the existing shape that I don't want to draw over, I'm going to draw under it. I pick up my pen, have it travel over as if I'm drawing, and continue on the other side. So, like this. It's nice with these, something that's uh, small, because it makes it easier. You know, if, you don't have, uh, if you don't have a long paced place to travel over, um, that, that just gets more difficult the longer or the wider space that you have to traverse. This one I'm not going to have to uh, sort of worry about. Okay. Is it, and going slow helps. Having it travel over in my head, I picture like cartoon dotted lines going over. So that way it just sometimes it helps. It just depends, especially when I'm getting used to doing it. And, like, and if you're doing this like I'm doing where I'm, um, you know, I, ha I have the, the curvy border and uh, I made it so that way this is like a larger pattern underneath. And I, I had mentioned early on, it's like I'm doing halibut underneath the whole border. Make sure that you get even these just a little, let's see, did I do a diagonal there? No. Even if it's just a little piece like that, because I, I call it making it convincing. <laughs> So that way it really does look like you, you know, you're, you've drawn under that entire pattern in and So even there, just, just, just that little bit. Yeah, and I think that that's it. So there we have it. Now, for shading. Oh, there are, there's a couple concepts on this. One is you can put, and I actually, I think I will do that. Um, one is you could put uh, a round, I'm going to call it a round of graphite. Um, so just like this. So I'm just, I'm making a, a big circle and I'm spreading it out a little bit and I'm doing it in these intersections where all of these seeds converge. As the other, if you've done it big enough, you could just, you know, put a little graphite here, here, here. It takes a little bit longer, you know, in the spaces. You know, this is a little easier. It has, either way has a, it has a different effect. So um, in this one, I'm going to, I'm just going to take my tortillon and I'm bringing out the graphite, but don't go too, too far. You want to go about a third of the, a third or so of the way into the seed. Because on the other side, like right here, well, I'm coming up this way also. And in order to have a neat effect with the shading, that one came close, um, you have to have some of the original tile color there. Now, sometimes I will start this way, and this also gives it like a tufted look. I see one that I missed. And... If you're doing like this, so sometimes it's just a like a little half half circle sort of just whatever you need 
and then I'm not doing a full circle here. I'm just I'm going like back and forth as if, but I'm not gonna you know I'm I could get really oh oh pick up oh pick no not gonna do that. When it gets big enough and I can just, I can move the whole circle up a little bit. Now sometimes, here's what I've noticed. On the diagonals, I don't seem to get that far with the graphite when I'm just doing this. And I'm trying to keep it centered. So what you can do, is kind of what I mentioned earlier, is you can just take your tortillon and just push push a little bit of the graphite, you know, up a little bit further. But again, what you want to have is have some of that original tile color in the middle so that way you can see... Um, say so two things. If I go, let me go a little bit darker. Um, if you get it dark enough and there's enough contrast, um, I think it makes it look shiny, like as if it was metallic, and that these are like bent, and that's the shine is that that spot there. But sometimes you have to have a, a decent enough contrast, so that means sometimes just going a little bit darker with the graphite. And I'd rather err on the side of lighter because you can always add some, as we don't put any erasers in our kit. I'm, I'm going to start calling it the E word. <laughs> yeah, so like that. Like I said, and then, you know, if you're not, you know, if you feel like you need to push it out a little bit, you know, into certain areas, you know, it doesn't hurt to just do that in those, in those certain ones. Because otherwise, um, like I said, if I had done... You know, if I keep going out, well, something is going to get buried like that, and that's what we don't want. So there we go. That is Fife. Now I was going to make a make a joke, and you know what? And I think because um, I do believe I did this on a Zentangle quickie. Um, if I didn't, it'll be the next one. Um, but I thought <laughs> because I'm a musician, and I thought, well, this one's Fife, but we need we need a drum to go with the Fife, like a Fife and Drum Corps. So if you want to pair this nicely, and I'll, I'll put a link, if I did the video, I'll put a link in the description section so you can pair that with uh, with Henna Drum. So we have Fife and Henna Drum. <laughs> oh, I cracked myself up. All right. Anyway, um, uh, let's see. No, I don't need to show that one. I want to show a little bit. Actually, I don't know where the graphite went on this one. But this is one uh, done on a Renaissance tile. And it was the same idea. Maybe it's just rubbed off, but let's just, I'm going to redo it. Um, I see it in there somewhere. Or I could have just decided I was coloring it all. But when you use a toned paper, like this Renaissance um, tan uh, paper, it makes it like extra shiny. Um, when you, I'm just going to spread it out just a smidge. Yeah. And in my opinion, it just makes it look, you know, extra, extra shiny when you have that stark white in there. Which then makes it even more apparent. Like, nope, you absolutely need to be real careful with how far, how far out you go. Oh yeah, see that looks kind of neat. The challenge with this Renaissance paper, though, and I know Zentangle is, uh, they're, they're changing it, so um, at some point um, uh, there'll be some a little bit different texture because this one is so delicate. And so as I'm using the Tortillon, I'm picking up, you know, paper and whatnot. So anyway, it's a really fun tangle. It makes for a neat texture. Uh, could be something that's worked behind something. And you know, and on top of it, I did not mention you don't have to shade it if you don't want to. And also, that's just one one way to shade it. Um, you know, I always add the shading in because it does bring uh, bring our work to life, and that's just so much fun. So, with that. If you enjoyed this video, would love to have a thumbs up, a like on it, uh, and also to have you subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. And if you do, make sure that you hit the notification bell next to it so that way you decide uh, how you want to be notified by YouTube about when I post new videos, uh, of which I'm doing one a day at least. And then if I if I get a, a, a class replay done, then there might be a couple other ones, but just so you know. So if you don't like things popping up on your phone, just click, nope, I don't want to be notified and then that's all good but you're still subscribed and when you go to YouTube then you can see the, from your on your subscriptions who has new content and then you can watch you know at your leisure and not have things you know like I said blown up your phone all right in the description section 
links to step outs, other information that I might find, and um, as well as links to connecting with me. If you want to come take uh, a class, I do a combination of paid and free classes uh, Thursdays. I'm, I do two sessions of free classes, so you can check them out uh, on the website. Uh, links are there, uh, as well as other ways to, to connect if you want to like follow on Eventbrite or Meetup or something like that, so you get notices when I post new things. So, With that, thanks for your time, thanks for watching, and I wish you happy tangling.